Hello and welcome everybody. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. We've been working on some concept art and we've been working on some, uh, you know, some tutorials and stuff in the past. So I thought today what we would do is we would work on uh, a little bit of a, a, a piece, just uh, work on one piece of art, um, whatever, you know. And I thought uh, it'd be pretty cool to do something that uh, you can reference yourself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've been reading Superman Unchained, which is pretty good. Um, so I'm going to do redo the cover. That's that's what I'm going to do. I have the cover here with me. And if you don't know what it is, you can do a Google search. And all I'm going to do is redo it myself. Okay, so at this point, let's begin working on the cover. And I'm time-lapsing this, so it will go by pretty quick. I start with the basic Loomis structure, so the basic pelvis, use boxes and sticks to kind of show where everything is supposed to go and once I have the cover laid out Superman is uh, poised up against something lifting what appears to be a tank um, once I get everything laid out I start filling in adding some uh, some thickness to everything everything some dimension so you can see there I'm adding the foreground and uh, I added some lines and now I'm going to go in and instead of just using the boxes, now I'm going to start trying to add some polygons to help me. And what I mean by that is basic shapes like cylinders, rectangles, squares, trapezoids, all that kind of stuff just to help me see where I want everything to go. Now the, the right leg, the one that's on the left on the page, is in front of the arms. And the other leg, the one that's kind of um, down into the side. That one is uh, kind of tapers off into the background and is covered by um, the background and the foreground. So it's not a big deal. Alright, so at this point I'm going to add a little bit of uh, detail to everything. So I turned off the blue lines, lowered the opacity on the green lines just to help me visualize everything. And I'm going to make the basic shapes of the face. Now I'm not going to fill in the eyes or the mouth, the nose, or even the ears. I'm just making the shapes, kind of blocking and sectioning off my character here. So all I'm doing throughout this entire section is distinguishing between the different areas of the character. So here we're working on the chest. And you can clearly see that is the chest. And now we're going to move down to the abdomen and we're going to work on the abdomen. Because if you notice the green lines, they're very busy, very hectic, very everywhere. So this will help us really define where our where our um, piece is at in terms of anatomy and in terms of everything. And in terms of anatomy, I I think that if you copy someone, as I'm doing, I'm I'm looking at uh, reference here, and I'm basically copying the uh, the cover of um, Superman Unchained. Um, but you know, give it my own fl flavor, my own style, and if you do that, you can really learn a lot in terms of anatomy and composition of a piece. Because um, you know, this is a shape or a pose that I usually would not draw on my own, and copying it is a good way to like expand your your muscle memory in terms of drawing. So just by looking at this and just by going over it a few times, I can see a couple things that I didn't like on the chest. And um, compressing the side there is a little bit tricky for me. It's still something that I'm working on in terms of getting all the fold right. Um, and again, I keep moving this hand just because, and I think I move it one more time, just because it's a, it's a big part of the actual piece. I want it to look like he's, you know, got that clenched fist going. Um, and now I zoom out again. And the reason I zoom out is um, there's less detail on the legs. So why bother trying to get everything right? Uh, may as well just zoom out and get it done quickly. And um, you know these lines are very rough, but we can start to see some basic anatomy. We have you know anatomy of the hamstrings, anatomy of the quads, the different muscles of the arm, and even the abdomen and chest muscles. Alright, so let's take a look at what we've done so far. We started with our Loomis structure, um, the basic pelvis and basic you know, shapes for every single piece. And uh, once we got that down, we began to add um, 
the green outline, which in essence was filling in some three dimensions uh, using polygons, using shapes. And as you can see here, um, once we started adding those shapes, we definitely got some good results out of it. We got some good anatomy. We got a good idea of what our character looks like, what we need to work on, and what you know what looks solid. And um, key thing to remember is we are using shapes, so we're not just pulling and trying to create muscles. Um, you know, I use basic shapes to help me. Um, you know, that square, or for example, for the chest, I used a shape similar to this. And as you can see, this is kind of like that right side of the chest right there. So using these basic shapes, we got a good sense of what's happening. Then we add the red, and the red was our basic anatomy, not worrying about costume or full muscle texture or anything of the sort. Okay, from this point, what I'm going to do is go in and add detail using a simple pencil. Now this is still not the inking phase, this is the basic penciling phase. So, you know, pro artists, they're able to pretty much jump from the green straight to this. And normally I would too, but for a video, um, especially a tutorial or a lesson or something like that, I would not do that. So, as you can see there, I'm drawing some hearts. That's how, you know, I, I draw two hearts, then I cut them in half, and that gives me the ear. That's usually how I do it. Um, and as for the hair, again, this is a sketch, so it's all very uh, rough. So I draw in my my hair, and then I realize, oh, my neck is too long, my head is too small, so I decide to reposition it. One of the many perks of having a digital program is you can reposition, and you don't have to erase and redraw everything. And again, these are the penciling uh, stages, so I try to follow along with my lines so far, but again, I use them as a guideline. I don't, you know, I don't commit to them. I don't, I don't stick with them, you know, as though it was, you know, a religion. I, you know, I use them to, to guide me in my drawing and kind of just trace out where I want everything to go. So, you know, and, and in doing that, oftentimes I'll realize, oh, my, you know, my construction lines weren't that good. So I'll change stuff on the fly, and that's okay. We shouldn't be afraid to do something like that. Now, as for this part, the leg gave me a little bit of a hard time because, well, I'm still not very good at drawing legs, especially with foreshortening and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm still a novice, guys. I'm not, I'm not a pro or anything spectacular. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to draw everything in, make sure everything's in proportion and in perspective. And it's looking pretty good so far, so I'm, I'm liking what I see, so I decide I'll draw my symmetry line, basically cut my character in half, and start adding some of the costume pieces. So I added the belt there, and I add the diamond, I try to follow that, um, that half line, and usually I would make the diamond bigger, but Jim Lee makes it small, so I guess I'll follow along with that. And as for the cape, I go ahead and add it there. And then I add the boots as well, I believe. I don't remember exactly how I do that. Um, but this is just, uh, I put it on a separate layer so that I could edit it without being worried about messing up my construction lines or anything of the sort. Okay, and now I begin with the inks. I make a new layer for inks and I have my Superman ready to go. So let's do this. And the way I do this is, um, it's a pretty basic, uh, pretty basic procedure for me. My Wacom doesn't have good sensitivity, so I have to kind of adjust the uh, thickness and stroke in and stroke out of the pen to get that um, natural feel to it. And even so, I'm not very happy with it, but I try to make do with what I have. And um, I try to follow my construction lines, my sketch work as much as possible because for this drawing in particular I was very pleased with my sketch work so I didn't feel it needed too much adjusting maybe on certain parts but as for the face um, I try not to get too detailed with the line work because um, it tends to get too busy and it starts looking ugly if it's too busy so for the hair um, you know I should do a tutorial video on hair but I don't find myself to be too good at it anyway 
but uh, I kind of like to just um, outline the hair but not really draw in all the hairs individually and I feel that it kind of gives it a nice flavor to see okay these are the hairs that you know are flowing and the other ones are kind of slick back still or you know still attached to the head or shorter or something and um, you know I'm just adding the elements that uh, I feel would protrude the most so as you can see there I left the cape I didn't add that quite yet um, I didn't know how I wanted the cape folds to look so I thought I'd skip it and work on other things that looked more complete um, the overall body looks very complete so that's kind of one of the first things I do and if you notice I sharpened the back a little bit more I, I think that gives it more of a, a buff kind of like really trimmed look to it so I kind of like that now as for this arm I gave it a little bit of a bulkier muscle and I saw that it was a bit thin so I decided to kind of just make it a slight bit bigger I skipped the hand because I'm terrible with hands and I still need to practice that so I come back to it in a little bit and as for now I'm just working on the legs get, making sure everything's looking proportionate nothing's looking too grotesque or too big or too out of place um, I don't want anything to be blatantly wrong with my drawing that way overall it's a good drawing even if there are parts that I'm not 100% happy with for example I'm not happy with his uh, the arm on the left here this one I don't like the way it turned out at all but um, the hand I feel went pretty well kinda of mucked it up right there and then but I immediately saw it and fixed it and um, as usual I do tend to draw my hands a little bit small so I will have to select it move it make it bigger increase the size make sure it's in the right proportion and in the right you know direction and all that but overall I feel like it's a, it's a nice drawing and uh, the hand turned out pretty well everything turned out pretty nice I was um, quite pleased with it quite pleased with it um, and I blacked out some areas that I just did not feel comfortable with and you know what I know that's kind of a no-no but who cares it's my drawing um, as for the boots whatever you do don't just draw an outline for boots make sure you make them thicker than the actual calf that's the best way to make your drawing look, uh, you know, unreal, or make the costume look, you know, like it's not not really on him. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the belt. This is the new Fifty Two Superman, so you know he's not wearing the red underwear anymore. He just wears a red belt, and kind of calls it a day with that. And I draw the cape behind it, and I, I remember once I drew that, I realized, oh no, I'm on the wrong layer. And then I would have to go back and erase and carefully erase so I won't erase my boot or anything like that. Um, I made the costume and uh, Superman on two different layers, so the set pieces like the S and the belt are on a separate layer. And I made another one for the cape. And my idea was, oh, I better do all this on the cape layer, then I could just erase but accidentally did it all on the Superman layer and kinda killed it for me something that was supposed to go fast ended up being really slow um, getting this S shield right is a little bit tricky for me I'm not very good at straight lines because my Wacom is very small but uh, I realized what I what I usually should do is just make a bunch of small little straight lines and connect them and uh, I was very pleased with the way it turned out it looked quite nice I think um, leaving it like this with the outline it didn't look as hot but once I deleted the outline around the border it ended up looking really nice and I was very pleased with it so and as you can see here it takes me quite a while to get the S right it takes me quite a while to get um, the lines the way I want them and I couldn't quite get that center one so I decided to go to the bottom one first and then come back to the center one and um, I was very pleased with the way that looked I very pleased indeed I I did make that a little bit bigger and then I erased the outline and once I do that it just looks phenomenal um, I was very pleased with that and uh, again all this is is just you know an exercise for me on new um, you know new positions for my character uh, new you know new studies of anatomy and how to bend muscles and which muscles overlap which other muscles and how does the chest stretch 
um, you can see that the chest is stretched up with the uh, what I don't know what the muscle on the shoulder is called uh, I think it's a deltoid so the chest is stretched up there um, but at this point I had my uh, Superman pretty much set so I decided to go in delete the outlines on the um, on the S here uh, just clean it up a little bit um, make sure everything looks the way I want it to look feels the way I want it to feel and the importance of making it on a separate layer as you can see there I can delete the S without deleting the um, the lines of the chest muscle and that's something because if not it'll look like it's a hard piece sitting on top of his chest instead of just a logo on a shirt or something um, now here's where it started to get tricky I didn't know what I wanted to do with the foreground so I just started scribbling and I realized oh it'd be pretty cool if I could make him like kind of lifting like a rock or something so I made the ground rough and just went in and just kind of cleaned it a little bit and tried to make the ground a little rough and then tried to make what he was lifting kind of rough as well and my idea was that I would darken the foreground and um, this is kind of my way of cheating I originally I wanted to do a plane and then draw a plane behind him like crashed but I didn't want to dedicate another two or three hours to this so I just did the uh, kind of like the rock formations and then some mountains behind him or something something very generic and bland I know but um, the addition of a foreground and a background object to my main character makes the main character kind of pop and in order to distinguish between the main character and the objects surrounding him usually in comic books you'll find kind of like a nice thick outline so once I get all this cleaned up which is what I'm doing now um, I'll start to dedicate some time to making an outline for the character and just kind of darkening him up make sure that he looks nice and uh, this is what the outline looked like after the character was um, after I spent some time doing the outline I'll jump ahead here alright now that I have outlined the character um, what I start doing next is basically going in and changing the foreground and the way I did this was using the lasso tool for the most part um, right there I'm just uh, editing the the way my layers look but I just basically use the lasso tool and um, my pen and just draw a, simul a simple outline and uh, I wanted the foreground to be very dark so I did some spots that I wanted to be white and then I just kind of filled the rest with black and I make sure that I clean it up make it look nice and it still doesn't look very much like rock it still looks too smoothed out so the next thing I do after I smooth it out is grab the lasso tool and make some squiggles um, simple as that just make some squiggles and then delete the area and as long as I'm on the layer with just the foreground um, it's not going to make a big deal so as you can see here I'm cleaning it up a little bit making sure that I'm not bleeding through to the next area so as you can see here I'm just adding some thickness here to some of these lines then I go in and I just start um, trying to delete trying to use the lasso tool squiggle out some areas delete and doing that makes it look a lot more like rock and it looks it gives it a very cool feeling so alright at this point I went ahead and did that for the top part to the part that Superman carries and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to section them off now I have the layer set up so that it's foreground Superman and then the background and then I'm going to add another one for the sky and um, and that's going to show beyond the mountains so the what I'm doing now is I'm going to separate colors too and this is just uh, so that I can get a good feel for what what I'm coloring and what's bleeding through um, I don't want colors to bleed through so I'm gonna pick colors that I'm not gonna use in my actual drawing um, for the foreground here I'll pick like a very bright green obviously the foreground will not be a bright green when it's over um, but this is just to fill so that I get a nice uh, feel for what's in the foreground and what parts of Superman won't be seen what parts of the background won't be seen and um, I can start playing with the color composition um, 
I added these little uh, squiggles, kind of like falling rocks. The way I did them is I used my lasso tool and just uh, freehand just squiggle something and then use the fill bucket and fill it with black and it makes this uh, you know those weird shapes kinda like the same way I did the the shapes on the bottom in there I used delete to delete the areas that I wanted to but on the other one I used the fill tool um, and it's kind of a nice trick for creating very organic looking rocks originally I was trying to draw them in myself and they were too rounded or too squared or too jagged um, this way it looks a lot a lot smoother and a lot more organic again I'm just using this green to fill in the foreground and this will help me kind of uh, gauge um, you know the overall piece and the overall what am I looking at what's what's really happening in terms of composition and everything of that nature alright so I've blocked off the colors for the different areas here and now I'm gonna go in and work on the shadows so I'll start by using the lasso tool then I'll end up using like and the fill tool and all I'm doing is blocking off big chunks of area and making them black and the way I'm doing it is simple um, I'm imagining the light coming from the left and from above him so everything to the right and down will be blocked off and blacked off and I am allowing some white areas on the edges as if it was a reflective light um, you know from bouncing off different surfaces and stuff like that but I am blocking off giant chunks of area and basically I'm gonna do this um, for all of Superman so I'll skip that for you guys okay at this point I've added the shadows to every part so it's time to start coloring um, first thing I'll start with is Superman here and I'm just gonna try to get into basic colors first so I'm gonna start with the blues and I'm gonna jump around I'm not gonna show you guys the gritty details of getting everything colored in perfectly that's pretty tedious and I'm sure you guys aren't interested so uh, I'm gonna start with kind of a mid-tone blue nothing too bright nothing too dark same thing with the reds the yellows and even the skin tones and um, it can be a little bit of a hassle to get all the coloring done especially because I'm working in raster it gets a little bit um, pixelated especially at 300 dpi which is what I use when I record um, if I were not recording I would probably do higher definition picture which means that I would get um, less pixelation um, but I I like the colors that I picked I think they were pretty accurate for Superman nothing too bright nothing too dark um, the skin tone is something that I go back and change later so it's not something that I'm very happy with as is but it's not a terrible skin tone definitely and uh, as for the hair I chose a very dark hair because um, Superman has black hair so I chose almost like a bluish blackish charcoal color and uh, I just went with that I thought it was a good mixture um, nothing too drastic and uh, overall for coloring I would say um, try to choose your most saturated colors on your focus and everything else should be a little bit more grayed out a little bit more grayscale a little bit less saturated and something that I'll work with after I get the colors in the Superman is the colors of the foreground and background so here I am testing the shadows and I like the way it looks so here we are we're gonna color the background now I took out the shadows and I just chose a mid-tone brown something very simple um, a simple brown shape brown color and uh, I'm just gonna go over all the greens um, just turn them brown and then uh, use the lasso tool to highlight some areas and create a darker tone and a lighter tone for them so as you can see here I'm just coming in creating some lighter toned areas where I think light would shine through and then creating some uh, afterwards I'll create some darker toned areas where I think that light will be obscured uh, excuse me it's a little late so same thing with the top here uh, wherever I think light would hit I'm just gonna add some lighter tones and wherever you know it would get dark I would add darker tones so I'm going to blast through this and then just show you guys the final piece in a minute. Um, all I'm going to do is just finish shading and then tweak the colors a little bit just to get it to look the way I want it. So here's the final piece. Uh, I, go, I went ahead and rendered it for you guys. And uh, overall I thought it came out pretty nice. Um, the coloring, 
I could use a little bit of work with that, but I came, I thought it came out pretty well. So hopefully you liked the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.